Hey everyone, this week the work continues on the front end of my car doing paint prep. And over the weekend, I was able to get my front fenders ready to reinstall. But before I reinstall them, I wanna show you how I rolled the fenders for additional tire clearance. Garage time. Okay, now I haven't decided which tires I'm gonna run on this car yet but I do know that this factory arch on the front fenders has a pretty sharp edge to it and it protrudes into the fender area a good you know, half inch, five eighths of an inch. So what I'm going to do is to reduce this by rolling it underneath. Now that's better than just cutting it because if you cut it, it weakens the fender. So I'm gonna hopefully come up with a method on how to roll this fender lip inside for a, a, additional tire clearance. Okay, the danger in rolling this fender arch is that it is likely to crack the paint. Now I'm lucky in that the fender's removed and this is only epoxy primer, so I'm happy to respray it if I need to. That's why I'm doing it now. If the car is already painted, then it, it's possible to roll the edge without cracking the paint, but it depends on how thick the paint is and how old it is. There's methods where you can heat it up and try to prevent it from cracking, but I do not want to have that headache, so that's why I'm doing it right now. Okay, now there are a couple different methods on how to roll fenders. There's actually some commercially available tools that attach to the brake rotor, and it has some rollers. I think that's where the term come from, comes from, and it gently massages this arch underneath the car. Another method which I actually like is a baseball bat. I think it's super clever, it's necessity is the mother of invention, and you basically wedge a bat between the tire and the uh, fender arch and you just sort of roll it carefully underneath. The method that I'm going to try is the hammer and dolly method. And because I have great access to the fender, it's off the car, I can uh, you know, turn it upside down, get in there with a hammer and uh, massage it underneath. So to allow for the tire clearance, it's best to roll the edge from about 10 o'clock to two o'clock. That will ensure during any sort of wheel turn or suspension travel that it's not gonna interfere. Now this is, as I said, a pretty tall lip. So I'm going to cut the lip down just a little bit before I roll it over. That makes it easier to roll over and it also makes it less susceptible to trap a bunch of dirt and moisture in here once this has collapsed. Before I grind the metal, I'm going to seal up all these uh, hidden cavities here so I don't get grinding dust in all the areas I just treated. Okay, be, because, because this is painted on the back side, I don't want to put too much heat into this. I'm just using a um, flapping flapper wheel on this angle grinder to grind this down. But I'm going to do it in like 30 second steps so it doesn't put too much heat into the epoxy primer. Okay, the grinder took up down to about three tenths of an inch here, and it was, you know, six tenths of an inch. So that's about half the height here, and then it's tapered from lowest to highest between, you know, 10 o'clock and two o'clock. Now, this exposes raw metal on this lip here, and if you're doing this on a finished car, you could come back and, and put more paint over that exposed edge or, uh, you know, primer and then paint it 
just to keep it protected from uh, rusting. Okay, I'm gonna try this method. This is a uh, like a concrete chisel or something. It's, it's got a little bit of weight to it. I'm gonna be putting that um, right back here in the crease. You know, you want, it to, you want it to fold at this lower edge. So that's gonna prevent the whole fender from collapsing in. It's gonna, it's gonna really drive the, um, the pressure onto that corner, and this is just gonna hammer it flat. So I'm just using, this is a Martin hammer. Um, this one has the highest crown. So I'm gonna go uh, real slow back and forth until this uh, folds in. Okay, I stopped to show some, some progress here. Now, this is the factory undercoating that's still here, just as this is the factory undercoating. And because I'm using a steel hammer, I'm already getting this stuff chipping off. It's not even all the way formed over yet. So, you know, this is a, here's a little piece that needed to be taken off anyways, because there was some rust underneath there. Um, so this is something that you know, you might be able to use a nylon hammer, and I, I actually have a nylon hammer like this one, but I don't want to damage my hammer just hitting on this edge, and I'm going to be uh, re-touching this up with more epoxy primer anyways, but just wanted to show you, you know, what could happen if you're doing this on a, on a car that's already painted. You're probably likely to at least have to do a little bit of touch-up. Okay, and here's a view of the, of the fender. I'm not distorting anything out here. Um, nothing out here is getting distorted. It's only bending on this ledge right here, or this arch. And you're, you can see how the epoxy primer is cracking as well. There's a crack right there in the epoxy primer. So I didn't take any precautions to you know, heat this up or, or, or go gently with a softer hammer. That's why we do this now, so you don't have to crack it later. So I'm gonna be sanding all this back and, and re-spraying uh, epoxy primer. And now I'm using this piece of um, 18 gauge wire and I'm just using it as a checker to see how uniform this hemmed over edge is. So this is just less than a tenth of an inch and I want to leave a little space in there so I can clean this out in the future. If I was to hammer it completely flat then that's just asking for rust. So I'm not going to go super flat, but this has got good resistance until it gets really loose right here, but all through here it's nice and tight. Cool. Okay, here's how it looks from the exterior. There's the transition between the rolled edge and the thick edge on the front. You can see that's a lot of damage. No, that's a lot of damage! Here's the transition to the back. So this, this tells me that I haven't completely changed the shape of the fender. This is all as flat as it was before I started. So that's good. 
shape of the arch is is not been modified by by hammering on it the way I did, so that's good. This cracking is would be really hard to avoid in my opinion. I know people do it all the time, um, but often you have to touch it up. So I'm going to sand this back with 80 grit and uh, put some more epoxy primer on. Okay, now you can see the edge in bare metal and it's not lumpy at all even though I hit it with a hammer. It looks and feels really nice. And then the outer edge also is looking, looking pretty nice. Okay, the other thing I just realized that if I didn't trim this, it would have been almost all the way up to this curved portion of the fender, which would make it even more difficult to clean. So I'm glad I reduced the height here because you don't want to trap um, dirt, debris, moisture in here because anytime you get this packed up with, uh, with dirt, it retains the moisture and then it will cause this lip to rust. So unfortunately, the disadvantage of rolling this fender is that it's going to require some maintenance. I think, you know, once a year or so, this channel needs to be cleaned out with a toothbrush or a um, piece of wire or something to make sure this stays clean. Okay, a quick measurement on the total thickness here. This is after sanding. That's 0.175. This is almost 0.2 right here. A lot of rubbing occurs here towards the front. So I made this um, right here is about the thinnest, 0.175. Okay, that's almost half an inch or uh, 12 millimeters, which is pretty significant considering, you know, I didn't do anything to reflare this, this front fender. Hopefully um, that'll give me some better options in tire choices and uh, you know, bigger is better, right? Okay, I'm gonna mix up some more epoxy primer to you know, get in the back side of, of this uh, new hemmed over edge. But wow, this fender has really gone through a lot. This poor thing you know, started out as a short hood fender. It's had um, you know, this back date piece installed. Um, you can see the, the TIG welding video on how I did that patch. Look for that link right there on the top. All these back date parts were, uh, were homemade. All these brackets homemade to hold the grill. Um, it's had the, the fuel filler right back there. Fuel filler has been filled up and also the antenna hole. You can see that on the backside. A lot of this up here has been reworked in order to get that perfect three millimeter gap. Here's another video on that. This happens to be the only uh, part, removable part, I should say, that came with my car. This is the left front. It was not damaged in the wreck or it wasn't parted out with whatever else was sold. Everything else on this car, both doors, deck lid, hood, everything else has been replaced. This is the only original panel to my car. Now, it's not original anymore, but it should serve me really well. So hopefully you found value in the way I did the rolling, just using some simple hand tools. I realize this technique is definitely not for everybody. A lot of you don't have your fenders off. A lot of you aren't in the painting process. But I wanted to share the results that I got. Um, a pretty tight hem and the way I trimmed it and so forth, I think that is uh, hopefully valuable to some of you. If you guys have questions or if you feel like you know, this is professional material, or if you've tried something that you've seen in one of my videos and having a tough time with it, you know, please let me know. I'm gonna be doing a live stream on Sundays, and I will answer any questions about my car, whether it's, or your car, whether it's a technique or what you're working on, or if you need some advice, I am happy to provide my opinion on that and uh, get you guys moving in your projects at home. So I'll leave the details down below in the description. Um, it is for Patreon members. I will create a Patreon page and those who are members will have access to the live stream. So please take a look at that and hope to see you guys on Sunday. I'm gonna keep working on this fender. I still have some more time this week. Um, I'm just not gonna show you all the same video as last week with the rust proofing technique. Um, you can watch that video again if you wanna see more of that. But uh, it's really just tedious work, a lot of detail. Um, and I'm trying to get everything done so I can get the fenders back on the car. So hopefully next week we'll be either doing more block sanding on the, um, the front half of the car 
or we'll be working on the, uh, the tunnel oil cooler duct. I'm not quite sure yet. So please come back, see you next week. Also, if you wanna see all my videos in chronological order, just click right here.